This is my recently built FA18C VR cockpit for the CS and I can use it in several different ways. One is just using my 50 inch 4K TV as the monitor without anything else. Next is using the 4K TV and the DIY infrared tracking systems with OpenTrack free software for tracking my head movement and then using this virtual reality device which will give you a very different experience. So I'm going to discuss in more detail what are the advantages and disadvantages of using different solutions. Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to discuss more about my experience on the display solutions. Which one is the best for doing the flight simulations, especially in using Digital Combat Simulator as my main simulation platform. If you want to have a quick answer of which is the best solution in my opinion, it will be of course using VR as it gives you the most immersive experience best situational awareness and basically it will transport you into the real aircraft though it is not without some disadvantage one of it is you will not be able to fluently interact with your cockpit the controllers like joystick hotel systems button box or even worse the keyboard as you cannot see the outside environment when you are inside vr device for VR, in my opinion, you need to use minimal a HOTA system setup and some specific button box to make a better experience. Once you practice and master the setup, it can be quite fluent in most of the time as your body will adjust its reflexes or muscle memory based on the position of the switches and controllers unless you keep changing it time to time. Using VR will not going to provide the perfect solutions until more ideal solutions like hand tracking and haptic controllers available as proven solutions in the future. And I hope in near future. Some manufacturers like Pimax or even Valve, SCC or even Oculus have accommodated sort of see-through camera but not yet implement an integrated hand tracking as one of the solutions. So I hope they hear us. I'm going to discuss the first and the more common solution for using the simulation, which is using your monitor, either a dedicated PC monitor or TV as a monitor. Each has its strength and weakness. PC monitor will give you highest refresh rate, while TV as a monitor will only max up to 60 Hz for 4K TV, for example. Or in some TV, they use some sort of duplicator to max out to 120 Hz. However, using TV as monitor provides you the best value for money to increase the size of your display. Recently, PC monitor and TV kind of merging to accommodate higher refresh rate, up to 144 Hz, while maintaining display size, resolutions, and quality panels such as OLED, QLED, also HDR technology and many more. The high refresh rate in monitor or TV for simulator especially is not the Achilles heels. The bottleneck lies in your PC, which are the combination of the CPU speed and powerful graphic cards. To allow let's say 4K in high refresh rate and beautiful but most demanding setting in the graphics. For example, the highest resolutions, texture quality, Render quality, MSAA, anti-aliasing to remove pixelations and shadow. Those are the ones who, which create beautiful graphics, but also demanding high hardware performance. But again, seeing beautiful graphic is not the only reason we do simulations. So at the end, we should balance between beautiful graphics and simulation overall experience. The advantage of using monitor, in my opinion, is allowing you to use your basic flight controller or joystick combined with more conventional keyboard with a lot of shortcuts this can save you money from purchasing full hot assistance or button box 
Even if you could DIY your system to save money, it is not for everyone's skills. The main disadvantages are basically limit your experience or immersions, especially in combat or high-speed maneuver, where you have to look around. For example, when you need to switch view from one side to another side, or from looking out to look inside your cockpit view. However, we have been gaming using mouse, keyboard, and PC monitor for so long. That might be just what you need to play The Sims. I said play because at the end, when you want to simulate the experience, to me it means that you try to simulate as if you are in the real aircraft doing the piloting. That's the ultimate goal of simulator. So depending on your objective and how much money you want to spend, using monitors probably should be sufficient. Many best players in DCS are just using PC monitor and basic controllers like joystick and keyboard. But because they have more hours of practices, they have become very good at it. So don't be discouraged if you don't have all the gear you wish or you want. However, for more immersions, better experience and even better control, you need more technology. Next is to add a head tracker. For example, the well-known brand like Trek IR is one of the solution in the market, but they are not cheap. For more affordable solutions, many people are using DIY tracking, which includes a camera with or without an infrared light clip of your face or head you want to track. With advanced level of application today and faster computer, the solution has become an easy to handle solution for the PC. There are lots of freeware and payware available in the market, to name a few are OpenTrack, FreeTrack, FastTrack Noir, and recent Toby Eye Tracker, which can be configured and connected to DCS for tracking your head movement. The slight head movement uh, translates to moving your camera few left, up, down, right, and release your hand to control the flight of your hotest controller for other purposes. The solution will definitely improve your quick response and better control of the view inside the cockpit. Sometimes even people use this tracker to make a movie from DCS to, simul to simulate your head movement. The other advantage in addition for better control and quick response are you still can use a single monitor or TV as the main display while you still can see around the cockpit or external view just with a slight movement of your head, basically enlarging your effective field of view by shifting the focus with your slight head movement. So you still can see the monitor but you need to tilt or move your head a bit to show another angle. The larger or wider the monitor will help you see more when you move your head around. The disadvantages are basically still limit your immersion and to some extent, you need to make the head movement as a new habit because if you move your head erratically, it will make a sudden few changes in the monitor and sometimes it can be a bit confusing. The tracking solution, except probably if you use proven system like Track IR or some other brand, will depend much on the build quality and combination with which camera being used, infrared LED light clip that being used, and your environment lighting if you use your own face to track and not using the infrared light clip. This solution also sometimes create delays or lag when you move around, and the setting can also be off and need to reset again after some times. If the light clips have moved, as for example, from your original position, they will change. Again, with a lot of practice, you could master it and become an expert in using this solution. No, finally, the VR solutions. I said this is the best, at least for me, as I've tried so many years using monitors and then my DIY infrared tracking 
which served me for quite some time. But I, I believe we do enjoy seeing beautiful graphics even in games such as first-person shooter and adventures. Seeing beautiful rendered graphics to me is one of the best things to enjoy the most. With VR, however, there is additional element called immersion. VR has brought me the missing pieces on putting you directly right into the game or simulator. Man, that's really made me amazed when I tried it for a few years ago and still now. It's still far from perfect to human eye resolutions, build a view, and other as aspects. But as mentioned earlier, since it brought another element other than graphics, which is immersions, it has balanced out the experience, at least for me. The combination of graphics quality and immersion just using the older headset solutions still give better or good overall experience, especially in trying to simulate the real piloting experience itself. Currently, I still use the enhanced first generation VR HMD, namely Samsung Odyssey, first generations, and Pimax 5K+. I do own even older STC5, which I use the Lighthouse solution for Pimax now, and Oculus Rift CV1, but since I'm focusing on flight simulator, which require high resolutions, I rarely use them anymore. I did order Pimax at KX, in, not sure when it will come though. Meanwhile, I wish I could upgrade my Odyssey to recent announced HP Reverb G2 for example, but I think that will become just a waste today because with the current economic situation, it will not be a good decision to spend money recklessly anyway. Until today, using Samsung Odyssey still give me a good satisfying experience with good resolutions of 1440x1600 pixel per eye or 2080x1600 pixel in total resolutions and also its OLED display panels, the Odyssey is still the go-to VR headset for me in using the simulator. My Odyssey has also gone through major modification by putting an exhaust fan on top which throw hot air inside the VR and exhaust it directly blow the air outside to my head. The modification have provided me comfort in using the headset for longer use. Overall, it provides cool air, less chances of fogging, and better comfort inside the headset especially in my hot and humid country, even with air conditioner. You do hear some, bur some rumble noise from the fan when it is quiet, but once you are in the simulator, it fades into the background noise, and you barely can hear it. The Odyssey has been my staple VR headset whenever I want to practice or do a longer time simulation inside DCS. I rarely experience any problem to set up and use it with, within the CS, although it still requires more apps to open, which usually started with Windows Mixed Reality, then when you open DCS, it will load Oculus, and then SteamVR. I don't know why. You do sometimes experience some lag or hiccups, but they are very rare. I exper experienced less problem by shutting down my wireless LAN for example, to disconnect my PC to internet, thus preventing Windows or any other application to do updates or do some back-end processing through internet. Closing non-essential services inside Windows also will help. There are lots of good tips in internet about how to make your PC become more efficient and stable. The resolution inside and clarity of Samsung Odyssey is pretty good. But I guess with HP Reverb and high resolution VR headset will give you more good looking graphics, especially when looking at a small dial marking or looking in a distance for landmark and another aircraft. On the other side, the higher resolution will increase your system requirements which will increase total cost of ownership for the system. Even with foveated rendering solution, for example, the higher spec system will give you smoother experience overall 
especially in using high resolutions. You could test this by increasing the super sampling resolutions in SteamVR or inside DCS under VR tab on pixel density setting. Set it more than one times, let's say 1.2 times or 1.5 times. If you have some frame per second measurement tools or FPS tools, you can see the difference on the impact on the higher resolution above your VR headset native resolutions. How about Pimax 5K? Well, to be honest, Pimax 5K total resolution, which is per eye 2560 times 1440 pixel per eye resolution, combined with the wider field of view, which I rarely use the widest field of view anyway, so mostly I set to normal around 150 degree, to me at least still feel a bit worse compared with Odyssey. Probably I need to tweak more on the super sampling or other setting. At least the difference in resolution are not so apparent. The feel of view itself to me is not a night and day different, but it might be the result of using medium field of view rather than the widest field of view and the thicker face cover used in Pimax 5K uh, compared with the thinner face cover used in the Odyssey. That might probably affect. The larger field of view panel combined with the higher resolutions probably resulting in a not too much different pixel density in the display itself anyway, where the Pimax 5K has to cover larger display area almost double with 200 degree view, field of view compared with Odyssey only 110 degree field of view. The other quality difference in the display is Pimax still use LCD compared with OLED in Odyssey which provide more better color and contrast. The brightness in Pimax 5K is slightly dim, which I have to adjust from PyTool software provided from Pimax. PyTool do offer more control for your Pimax headset. You could even adjust brightness and contrast per RGB channel if you need to. Pimax, which use Lighthouse, also require additional steps in preparing the Lighthouse before you could use the VRHMD. STC Lighthouse version 1 sometimes experience some odd situation during initial setup or after changing locations. The lighthouse, the lighthouse which is using a moving mechanic at another part that might break down or had its lifetime. So one of the advantages in using Pimax 5K for me is mostly because I use it for my helmet. The first Pimax 5K is still using an elastic strap which I could easily dismantle and replace with another elastic band to be attached to my HGU55 replica helmet. This cannot be done using an integrated deluxe strap similar to Samsung Odyssey, New Valve Index, Oculus Rift S, or Pimax deluxe strap, which is quite bulky and have more permanent attachment to the headset device. Even Oculus Rift CV1 and Quest the straps still have some components that cannot be fitted into the custom helmets. I also use a separate custom headphone inside the helmet, so integrated headphones from VR headset are not required. Probably that's the only reason why I still use Pimax 5K today for the simulator. For me, Pimax 5K still cannot even beat Odyssey on the overall experience. Probably until my 8KX arrive, we'll see about that. By the way, the use of VR and SGU55 replica on the real pilot helmet looks like you are using sort of HMD, helmet mounted display in the real pilot gear, though the actual look of course is still way different. So overall as a summary for me, the best overall experience in using DCS for simulation is to use my VR solutions. Especially today, my Samsung Odyssey, which I have modified for better comfort. And now combined with the new cockpit FA18C VR cockpit, almost with one-on-one -on -one replica, I could get used to the right location of switches and buttons, even when I'm inside VR headset. Practicing over and over create a muscle memory of where the switches and buttons do located, creating more smooth and immersive experience inside. The VR. That's my sharing on my setup for my FA18C Hornet VR cockpit with DCS, focusing on the display, 
display accessories and PR solutions. So feel free to send me questions, which I will try to answer it to the best of my knowledge and experience. So see you next time.